What's up guys, this is Brandon, custom painter pinstriper, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome to Gooch Custom. I'm just a small town country kid from Sedan, Kansas. Town of about, when I was there, it was like 1,200 people. It's about 1,000 now probably. No one does this stuff at all where I'm from. I don't know where it really came from, but I've always been like gravitated towards like custom paint. I can get, look at magazines and stuff and see all the trucks. I don't know why. No one in my family is into that kind of stuff, but like I was just always gravitated towards it. People that inspire me, probably my number one would be my grandpa or my dad. I know that's like the cliche. Two of the hardest working men I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. Like back to the whole being raised in a small town. Raised in a small town, there's a lot of small town mentality there. Like work hard, blue collar, go build fence, haul hay type of a thing. So I was taught at a very young age, you want anything nice in life, you gotta work at it. So I put that towards my art and I gotta thank my dad and my grandpa for that. I just wanted to go over real quick, uh, just to double check. You said you wanted more of the white, right? Okay, cool. Okay, I was just making sure. I, I knew, I, I was pretty sure you said that, but I just wanted to double check before. I... I'm about to get going on it right now, so stay tuned. Artists, man, there's so many of them out there. These aren't the only ones, but I really, really looked up. Growing up, I watched uh, like American Choppers, like back in like the early 2000s, and Nubs was always on there, you know, painting the choppers. That's, I always remember like T-Boeing episodes of that show, and I didn't care less about the motorcycles. I just wanted to watch Nubs go on there and paint. Like I said, when you're, when you're raised, in a town like like my hometown being an artist is like unheard of type of a thing it's like not a real job a lot of people that live there they are very hard-working people so like when that's like hammered in your brain like your whole life like oh you don't have a real job unless you strap your boots on every morning and come home dirty type of a thing like that was hammered in my brain like ah you know I need to go out and I need to work at least as many hours and this and that the hardest transition was kind of getting rid of that mentality and, and, and realizing that that's not the only way there is to work and make money I guess I've been full-time for five years now and I tell people all the time, I haven't worked in five years. Physically, I log in way more hours than the average person does in a work week. I literally go nonstop. It doesn't ever feel like work. It's like my hobby, my passion. I would rather, I would be doing this stuff on my day off. Transition was, it was a little bit weird to get used to at first because, you know, you're used to waking up at when the alarm clock goes off and at five o'clock you punch out type of a thing. And I had to get that, the nine to five out of my mind because that's not the way this works at all. When you're self-employed, especially doing with what I do, nobody needs this stuff. So like, you've got to really grind and you've got to really find the people that want it. Because like custom paint, like no one needs this stuff. You know what I mean? So like, you got to find your clients. You got to find the people that are willing to pay you to do this stuff. And that alone is a full-time job. I got to thank social media for that. But like all the clears I spray, the clears, all my pinstriping, uh, like my urethane based striping, mm -hmm. uh, my candies, like all the transparent candies, it's all Tamco. That makes some really good stuff. I'm one of those guys, like that's all I need. Uh, the fact that I can wake up every day and do this, that's like a dream come true for me. I, I remember at one time in my life, literally like fantasizing about that. Man, it'd be awesome if I could just paint all day and not really do anything else, and that's what I'm doing. All right, so the layer that we're doing right now is this one. This is a black base coat, uh, holographic, flaked, and I candied it in a green candy. And then after that, we'll branch on. This is just a base coat, a green base coat, and these two right here. That's actually the same color candy, just different undertones underneath. And then the purple, obviously, is purple uh, candy mm -hmm. over a uh, just a regular mini flake. The white gray i guess color uh, i sprayed white actually it's like a gray it's like a white gray i guess i sprayed that and then uh, i did like a hex pattern and fogged over in some black just to kind of give it an undertone on that but that's what the finished out will look like when it's all done and i go back after it's done um as i unmask i go back and i'll shadow in areas to give it some depth and uh like a 3d look i mean it looks like a bunch of half moons mm -hmm. and i lay them on there shadow it move it up and over shadow up over shadow and just repeat that and you get a scaled look and then I'll go on top of that with a green candy. If you're not familiar with like how candy paint works, candy is like, the best way to explain candy is like if you spray, spray a green candy on a window, you can still see through the window, but the window's gonna have a green tint to it. It's transparent. All this stuff was done on top of the silver with shading and then I candy over it and changes it from silver to green. This color and this color are actually the exact same color. This just has black undertones in it, so it looks like it's darker.
as far as like a year from now, I mean, obviously growth and expansion is always good. Um, I don't know, man. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm good. As long as I can wake up every day and just keep doing this, we're good. Mm -hmm. I don't need much, much else. That's if it. something else happens, that's cool. So be it. Mm -hmm. If you could say one thing to an artist that maybe inspires to be like you and do what they love for a full time, what would you say? I would tell them to do you, focus on yourself. Absolutely do not listen to the people that don't understand your vision or your passion. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't going to get or see your vision and those people, not saying that they're wrong or they're bad people, but don't base your decisions off of their opinions because they don't have the same vision that you have. Us artists are wired 100% different than everybody else. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, and you cannot listen to that because they, they just don't, they don't envision it. They don't see it. They don't understand what artwork and what doing art whether it be like drawing, singing, playing an instrument, they don't understand what that does for you. This should all start out as something not to make money. It should start out as an escape, like painting. Like I didn't start out with like the intentions of, oh man, one day I just wanna be making all kinds of money painting. It started out as an escape for me. Like I'd get home from work and I'd put on music and this was like my escape. It just so happened I was able to turn it into my job, but that's how everything should start out. So like, don't ever doubt yourself. Nowadays, with the way social media is, if you're driven enough, you're gonna have to work, but if you're driven enough, man, you can literally, you can do anything. Like, if you, I'm not one of those guys that's gonna sit here and say like, you know, you can be whatever you wanna be type of a thing, but if you've already found your passion or your hobby that like lights a fire under you, run with that shit. Don't ever let anybody tell you you're not gonna make, do anything with it, because that's just, not necessarily true at all. green candy on top of all that so that it'll have like a green cast to it. That uh pretty cool. Sick. Actually before I do that I'll, I'll fog the edge in like a silver. Mm -hmm. So really lightly with a silver. Give it depth. Yeah because like so if it put a silver cast on that edge when I spray that candy on top of it the silver is going to shine through that candy differently than the rest of it is and it kind of gives it like almost a glowing look. Mm -hmm. So yeah I'll do it. I'll fog I'll fog the edges in silver, um, then, then you can. Good. What is this right here? So I'm fogging the edge with some silver, so when I candy over it in the green, this is going to be like a highlight. This will, this will be more of a, the edges will be more of a brighter green, I guess, if it's going over a silver base instead of a black. Mm -hmm. It'll almost make it look like it's kind of glowing. Like I said, that candy's transparent. So anything I put on top of that, whatever's underneath the candy is gonna shine through. So that's gonna be a different color popping through. Where did your name Gooch Customs come from? So I get asked this question all the time. Um, so Gooch Customs, so I had a buddy, still my buddy, way back, uh, we were in high school. I started dating this girl and it was her cousin and uh, small town, no one was into like low rider trucks and painting and stuff at all. So I was like the black sheep. Well, I started dating this girl from another town and her cousin was kind of into the same stuff I was into. He's like really, he's a like, fantastic artist. And uh, he had like a low rider van and stuff. Just like, we just hit it off. We started hanging out and we, uh, we started kind of, you know, building stuff, painting stuff. And one day he's wearing some Converse and he wrote GC on like the tongue of the Converse. And we were like, I was like, what's GC? And he's like, Gooch Customs. And I was like, what, what is that? And I kind of started out as like a joke. 
We were like a bunch of immature little kids. And he's like, that's what we're gonna call ourselves. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> kind of started out as a joke. Kind of was a joke, I guess. And then I ended up, I got I got an English bulldog and we named him Gooch, like the perfect name for a bulldog. So I named him Gooch. And then mm. I started going to show car shows and stuff and he'd always go with me to the shows and everybody likes an English bulldog, you know? And then like, it kind of went to the deal where like, hey, let's go over to Gooch's booth. Let's go to Gooch's booth, talk about my dog. And it kind of just stuck. So I was like, man, that's kind of catchy. I'm just gonna run with it. Everybody thinks it's like my nick, like my last name or something. It really isn't. It's kind of just like a random immature thing. One time we were like 16 years old and it just kind of stuck.